There we go. That ought to be better. Is that better, everybody? Y'all got sound now? Y'all got sound? Everybody hearing this shit? Everybody hearing? Yeah? Yeah, that's good stuff. That's, uh, I was just, before we, before we went live, I was even actually straight up, um, I was just, I was just bagging on myself, pointing out how, uh, I, I managed to just horribly forest gump my way through all this shit. And, uh, as, as you guys noticed, this time it's a lot better, because here we are actually on the air. Which is nice. So I'm gonna switch over to a different room. I'm gonna let the mods handle that shit going on in general, cause uh, yeah, no, we got uh, we got you know, there's, there's other places so you, you can be doing that. Oh, yeah, you, <laughs> damn, <laughs> fucking scat. That's not even scat porn. It's just it's like it's just nightmare fuel, raw, unadulterated fucking nightmare fuel there. So there we go. Yep. Uh, if I tweeted uh, it out yet? No, I haven't. I'm leaving that up to you guys. Um, because like once again, Forrest Gump, my way through this, and uh, we're live. There we go with counting. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Please be patient. I have autism, or please be autistic. I have patience. <clears throat> so there we go. Tweeted, tweeted, and uh, retweeted. Look at that. Look at that. I'm on my fucking game tonight. So yeah, as I said, Jeff's got some pressing family business. So we've got everyone's favorite uh, rebel with uh, rebel with some paws. I'm already getting started with the puns here. Uh, Gown Dangle <laughs> is joining us today. Uh, he's a guest co-host here. Um, fresh off of his, uh, his, his his weekend sabbatical at uh, the prison colony. Um, down in um, the Falkland Islands. That's that's ultimately why they fought a war, is so that they could send their naughty <laughs> Scotsmen there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's that's canon. That's exact. <laughs> it's, it's like that and sheep, you know. So yep, uh, we are midweek saints. I actually made it work. I'm exceptionally proud of myself. I kind of feel like shutting the whole thing down right now, just to make sure I don't like you know force come my way into a massive fuck up. But we're not gonna go that way. We got some fun news items. Check this out, guys. Watch what I can do. Oh shit, that's right. Oh god, I brought the fucking I brought the story up. Yeah, we got so we got a fun bit of uh, odd news to go over today. The first one I found is because I mean, who doesn't love a good cum joke, right? Um, <laughs> a grocery store sees a dirty word in summa cum laude uh, and censors the cake. Now this is a graduation cake, summa cum laude. It's a you know a graduation with honors, I believe it is. A uh, South Carolina woman isn't happy after a grocery store censored her honored graduate son's cake, which was supposed to include the Latin phrase summa cum laude. Uh, Kara Kozinski told the Washington Post a cake online uh, a cake online from Publix that was supposed to say, Congrats, Jacob, summa cum laude, class of 2018, as we can see here. Didn't exactly have the kind of, they kind of, they, they blanked the word out. They censored the word cum. Because they probably figured it meant, hey, dude, have fun banging all those co-eds off at Brown University. Um, now, this is, it's, it's like, if we're going to have censorship in this country, I can't help but think it should be funny. I think it should, I think this is the kind of shit we need more of, right? Yeah? <laughs> just, I just think it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Like, I don't know, like. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Who, who doesn't who doesn't want come on the cake, man? You know what I mean, like that's that's part of what gra that's part of like a graduation um, ritual here in the states. I know. Yeah, well, most most girls when they go through university, they get they get tons of fucking cum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's loads of frosting, loads of cream pies being offered uh, all up in, all up in that freshman class, isn't there? And so yeah, yeah uh, Jacob, um, I'm sorry that this grocery store uh, took away your cum. You deserve that come. You worked hard for it, bud. And uh, on behalf of everyone here on the internet, we, uh, we we salute you. Now, the the cake from Publix uh, with dashes for part of the phrase summa cum laude. She says online. She says the online message box did not like the word come. So it was like an automated thing. It's just like nope, can't put that on a cake. Uh, the Latin word for with. The computer marked it as a naughty word and substituted, substituted three hyphens. Kaczynski said, the, uh, Kaczynski said she then filed in, filled in a box for special instructions explaining the Latin word and placed the $70 order. 70 fucking bucks. 70 bucks for that fucking cake. And they, they couldn't even get their nut off on it. There's no <laughs> fucking justice left in this goddamn world. <laughs> she says the store gave her a refund and a gift card when she complained. Um, yeah, it even says right here. Look, it says profane. Uh, you can't, you can't put that. So yeah, this is uh, so if, if parents out there, if you guys, if you, any of you out there are uh, parents, you got kids graduating high school. Um, you're not getting any come on their cake. 
no matter how nicely you ask. But you might get a gift card, which is about, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bake the fucking cake. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, oh, I get it. Oh, I see. We can, uh, we can force cake. We can force bakers to make cakes for gay weddings, but they can't put cum on him. That was fuck. That ain't fair. <laughs> you guys got to remember, it's actually pretty late for Marcus here, so he's he's kind of like weaning into the wee hours of the morning, wondering how he got here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I do like though. I mean, like in this, the, the kid seems pretty pleased. Like he's got his Pokemon shirt on and shit. You know. He's all ready for college, clearly. Somebody get him. <laughs> we need to order him a box set of Harry Potter, though. That way, like, you know, when this kind of thing happens again, he'll know how to complain correctly. <laughs> 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 any, any, any final thoughts on any final thoughts on the cum cake situation, Mark? Um, <laughs> I want you to really think about it. This is this is some pressing shit. You just went through a First Amendment fight yourself, and you, you, you know that, like, there's an entire world of bakers out there who just really want to put naughty things on cakes. I think it's most of the parties as well. Not only that, they've been robbed because three dashes doesn't take as much icing to make as the word come. So if anything, he got less icing exactly. as well. Like uh, I'm saying that as a, as a man who obviously likes to eat. You know, I I I, so I often see things like that that most people don't notice. Yeah, and then <laughs> also when you when you consider too, like how bakers, you know, they apply frosting and stuff. I mean, you know, you take that whole frosting bag. That was probably just like you know, just two little strokes and, you know. You gotta work a lot. <laughs> you gotta work a lot harder to get the rest of it there. <laughs> hey, we're starting this show out classy as fuck, guys. You should be happy I managed to get it streaming to Twitch at all. <laughs> now we're gonna move on from a story about a woman complaining about an absence of cum on her cake to a story about a man who actually can't stop complaining about white shit on his uh, on his burgers and his uh, chips, and that is uh, this man. Man makes 1,000 pounds a year by complaining about mayonnaise. And doesn't even have a YouTube channel, as far as I'm aware, but if he does, call me. We need to book you on Saints. Uh, and he has advice. Now, if you guys, like, I I'm not, you know, I'm typically the kind of guy who, like, I hear shit like this, I'm like, what the fuck is Mike Cernovich doing now? But no. No, this is actual mayonnaise. Chris Owens makes about 90p, 90 pounds per month, uh, thanks to his tactical moaning. Well, tactical moaning. Yeah, ta tactical moaning. It's uh, it's one of those kind of things where it's like you know he he can he can say don't stop. I'm so close in like four different languages. It's pretty impressive. Uh, that's, that's the thing is he he th I think I'm going to go into this article and he's going to act like he invented this man. The far left have been doing this for years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you <laughs> tactical could tell, moaning. Yeah, but you could tell he's not like he's not a leftist because he found a way to make money on it. He's like, this is, I mean, this is this is capitalism at its finest, really. It's tactical moaning by an anchor. Cap. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. About fucking mayonnaise. <laughs> mayonnaise complexion ass condiments, yeah. Uh, Chris... Mayonnaise violates the non aggression principle. <laughs> can, I, can I speak to a manager? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like Ancap Karen has arrived on scene. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, Chris Owens, hate Chris Owen hates mayonnaise, and he says he makes about ninety pounds a month by complaining about its unwarranted use in food he orders at restaurants. This is from uh, Mirror.co.uk. The thirty-nine-year-old PR director from High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. If there's, I mean, Christ, I maybe this is just my American speaking out, but uh, when I hear someone from High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. That's like that sounds like where the Karens of the world come from. It's like, what, what do you do? I complain about mayonnaise. What do you do? I bet you, <laughs> I bet you do residential electricity or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking professional uh, mayonnaise complainer. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, he's probably. If anything, it's a niche market. Fucking you know the way you get ahead. Yeah, you get a speciality on. that not many people can do. Mm, That's yeah. how you make money. That's true, yeah, he did find a niche nobody else is uh, filling at the moment, and, um, and yeah, so, uh, yeah, he, uh, the third NPR director from High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire, said he always tells staff when there's an issue with his food and usually comes away with a free dish or a discount. You know, I gotta say, uh, Owen is, it's not the most Jewish name I've ever heard, but, uh, I mean, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's okay, I'm a member of the tribe, I'm allowed to make these jokes, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Now, the worst culprit, he says, is the burger. They always put mayonnaise on burgers. Man, this dad, I, 
fuck star starving refugees in Syria and shit. This guy needs a UN intervention right away. Now, I personally always demand mayonnaise on my burgers. And steak and cheese and a basket of fries and really anything I get. So this guy, uh... Man, I mean, I'm almost like, you know, I bet you he secretly likes this shit, and he just realized by bitching and moaning he could get a, he could get more than he uh, has coming to him. You ever he spends the 90 pounds a month on mayonnaise. <laughs> he just spends <laughs> the night, he, he rents, he, like, he books hotel rooms and just leaves special instructions to fill the, the, the tub with mayo. It's like, is it a hot tub? Does it have the jets? I like my mayo to bubble. Ooh, no. I, I actually, I actually just got an idea of that in my head, and I actually made me feel kind of sick because I actually genuinely do hate mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you, you fuckers in the UK? It's like you, I mean, you just can't deal with. Is it like got to be? Is it got to be hollandaise? You need something special? No, I actually just don't like sauce at all. Nothing. No, no kind of sauce. No, I don't like ketchup or anything like that. I don't touch it. Hell I just, I, I just don't think anything that's like runny is appetizing. <laughs> it needs to have it needs to have the texture of sand and gravel before I'm interested. I just want to see I just want to see somebody present you with an authentic Philly cheesesteak because you know what makes a, a Philly steak and like a Philly cheesesteak authentic, right? Is it mayonnaise? No, it's cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. <laughs> yeah, no, the, yeah, the liquid cheese. They just leave a tin of it, just cooking, like just heating up on the on the oven on the stove top. And they just cook the shit all day, and they'll just smack the steak in there. Usually, you get it with mayo, if you know, unless you're some kind of savage. But uh, yeah, and then they just take this like bread knife full of this like slathery liquidy cheese and just smack it on there. And by the time you get it, it's just like leaking through the bag. It's so good. <laughs> no, no, not for me. All of, a sudden, <laughs> all, all of a sudden, any notion of like escaping like censorship in the UK is like, well, I could go to America. But have you seen what they fucking eat? Yeah. I don't know, I, I've, I've been to America, I'm fairness, over a decade ago, but, like, uh, some of the food, like, I, I ordered, like, gravy, and apparently you guys have a different approach to gravy mm -hmm. as well, because gravy I'm okay with, that's a man sauce, <laughs> right, <laughs> but, but, uh, I just got this, like, white shit all over my fries, and I was like, what the fuck is oh, this? Oh, that's sausage, that's southern style gravy, that's sausage gravy, that's, like, breakfast gravy. Which is the best breakfast you can ever have anywhere, I'd say, would be you scramble up some eggs, you take a buttermilk biscuit, mash those two things together, and slather that shit in sausage gravy. And then you just wolf it all down and don't talk to anybody. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned, I learned to eat that shit when I was in the service. And so, like, you know, you, you, when you're in basic training, you just got to keep your head down, feet together, shovel that food in your mouth, get the fuck out of the defect. And every morning, it was like the highlight of my morning. It's like, oh, all that protein and cholesterol. Give me that shit. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he, I love the, like what he says about it, though, here. He says, um, mayonnaise is a tyrant of a condiment and very arrogant. I love how mayonnaise has actually been personified. Mm-hmm. Anthropomorphized <laughs> mayonnaise. I identify as mayonnaise, Ken, sir, and that uh, that comment offends me. Putting, mayonnaise putting, is arrogant. I'm putting you on notice, Owen. Chris Owen of Upper Something Combe Buckinghamshire Ski Hamlet of <laughs> something or other. Yeah, it's a, it's a tyrant of a condiment and very arrogant. It thinks it makes everything better, but it does not. Yes, Man, mayonnaise is very certain of its abilities. Mayonnaise is very dedicated to uh, <laughs> to making everything better. I don't get why you people don't understand this. <laughs> I've just actually I've just actually seen the bit that comes after that. <laughs> Chris dubbed Britain's biggest mona by everyone's favorite paper, The Sun. Yeah, I love The Sun. They they love me too. They're really good at giving people titles and 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 the like. So uh, it's like now, oh yeah they. They tried to be all nicey nicey to me when they wanted an interview, and when I told them to go fuck themselves, they went ahead with a bunch of articles calling me all all kinds of names. <laughs> Censoring out the word "come" all over the place. It's almost like they they, they run a bakery on the side. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's got to suck though. It's like you know that's a pretty good title for this dude, Britain's biggest moaner. Although I'm sure you probably personally know somebody who who's probably a bigger bigger bitch than this guy. I mean everybody. Yeah. Knows. Yeah. Quite a few. <laughs> now here's the thing. Well, like you've worked in the. You've, I know you, you've been a bouncer before, but you've, have you ever like yeah. been a line cook? 
No, no, never done anything to do with cooking. Uh, no, here's, well, here's one thing because anybody who's worked in the service industry typically knows that sure you should, uh, you should, and actually, yeah, I'll be getting to Streamlabs in just a moment. Thank you, Squigs and Buck. We'll get to those in just a sec. Um, but yeah, it, there's one thing you learn when you work in a kitchen. Like if you if if a customer uh, sends back food, it it you know one time oh fuck I'm sorry I didn't get it right but if you if they keep fucking moaning it's only going to get worse and uh, when you've been a cook for a long enough time you go sit down in a restaurant and like something comes out and it's not exactly perfect but you're like fuck it it's like you know less than twenty bucks or whatever you just let it go because you know if you send it back and you've turned into a pain in the ass there's no telling what they're going to do to it it's, yeah yeah anybody with sense knows this. Um, yeah, but Chris, uh, he was dubbed Britain's biggest moaner by the Sun. Said he prefers to be known as the, as at the, uh, as the best at not putting up with poor service and mistakes. <laughs> this guy's, guy's got to be great at parties. <laughs> Fucking hell, man! And he has advised other diners to speak up when there are problems with orders. He told BBC oh. that he earns around a thousand pounds a year by sending mayonnaise-ridden food back after specifically requesting his food come with no may. Uh, Chris added that he makes money complaining about others el others elements of service too. In total, he estimates he's made about three grand since he started complaining. That's a good looking sandwich, and look at all that mayo. Perfect. <laughs> Fucking ideal. Even if it's not a crostini. Fucking. <laughs> no. The, the ba bacon, I'm more than support, but see that veg and mayo and salad shit, man. Fucking rabbit food. Oh, I'm so, not interested. So you're saying the top half? The top half is okay. The, the top, the top, half, top half's for me. Yeah. It's rabbit food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. A side thing. Uh, Eighty-five percent agree. Roast potatoes are essential. I'm really glad that the media in the UK is tackling the important topics and 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 not letting anything uh, get get swept aside here. Uh, the PR display, the art director explained that his hatred of mayonnaise runs deep, but also detests other popular condiments. He said salad cream is simply mayo by proxy. <laughs> what do you think? As a, as a, fe mayo, as a fellow sauce. I've never tried it. Yeah. I've never tried it. I've never tried any of those sauces. May mayonnaise, I ate once by accident. It was on a sandwich that I bought. And I just, as soon as I realized I was chewing mayo, I spit it out and I put it in the bin. I didn't want anything to do with that sandwich. Just threw it in the bin, found a homeless yeah. guy, stared at him for 30 solid seconds without saying anything, and then walked away. Uh, I, I, I just turned around to him and said, you don't want this, mate, there's mayo on it. <laughs> 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 homeless, starving dude looks up like, oh, fuck, fuck thank yeah. you. Oh, ma mayo, fuck that, it's okay, I'll just, I'll just freeze to death tonight, I'll just, buddy. I'll just freeze <laughs> to death and go back to like earning my benefits at working at Asda or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't really have that much of a homeless problem here. Uh, our harsh winters kind of do a big clear out of that every year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> every, win every winter's just a big reset button for our homeless problem. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's like, it's like how the, where do the cigarette butts in New Orleans go? I, it, one rainstorm and they're all gone. It's like, yeah, it's how they take care of the homeless in England. Except instead of the rain, they just use fire hoses. <laughs> Street cleaners are coming through, honey. Get your rain slicker and riot shield ready. <laughs> you know, Chris said he once got a free pizza after mentioning the overuse of chili flakes and won 400 pounds in compensation due to a poorly fitted oven? Jesus. What the fuck? H how? What? He won four hundred pounds in compensation due to a poorly. Do you mean? Do you think he means like in his home? Like he, yeah, so, so yeah. He, I think I think it'd be in his home. He move. He moves in somewhere. Oh, so what? What kind of goon can't fit his own oven? Well, um, let's have another look. Uh, this guy. This, this, guy, <laughs> this guy right here. Does this? He does not have the look of somebody. He is. He, yeah, he has like the look of like a, a, a like a B level Doctor Who villain. The kind of like <laughs> it's like what's it, what's his evil power? He's he, a he dick. kind of he kind of looks like Mark Wahlberg after a decade of insomnia. <laughs> like that's that's what he kind of reminds me of actually. It. Yeah, I can see it. Can Marky see Mark it. don't like mail. <laughs> I just love it. He's, he's like, I could see him like right now. He's like, by the way, I'm gonna complain to your employer. And uh, oh, that's from Facebook. Never mind. Yeah, he's gonna complain to Facebook because they got the white balance on his profile photo wrong. Yeah. 
<laughs> fucking what a cunt. The high, co the high Wycombe resident urged fellow customers to stop putting up with it and that it's always okay to complain when you do so politely. I really just want to see a David Mitchell sketch like where he's playing this guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I've, I've got a feeling that this guy isn't polite. Like, look at his picture. Does he look like a polite man? Does he look like he, he doesn't come across as a, you know even a little bit arrogant when he complains? Mm. Oh man, he just looks like a prick. Oh, he yeah, looks no. like every customer's worst nightmare. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you can tell he's like he like he he begins and ends every sentence with like a tongue click and an eye roll. Just yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What's wrong now, sir? Do you have any idea what Mayo reminds me of? My dad's bukkake parties. Do you really want me remembering those while I'm here at Arby's? No. Maybe it was an unfortunate experience as a child involving his uncle, which is why he doesn't like it. anything that's white and runny. Mm, especially not I'm when it's saying. like going all up into his mouth. This is like that. That sandwich was probably so messy. He gets it all over his face. He's like, not again. He's having like flashbacks to his time on uh, on E fucked. <laughs> like, he, gets never... the thousand, he gets the thousand yard stare over thousand island dressing. <laughs> <laughs> the thousand island stare. <laughs> the thousand island stare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not bad for like five minutes of quick searching on the term odd news, huh? <laughs> now, yeah. I'm gonna swap over real quick. Just burn through some of these. Uh, got some. Uh, got a few Streamlabs donations coming in here. Uh, Twenty minutes ago, Raisu threw uh, five bits at me. Uh, cheers! Thanks, Raisu. Always appreciate that. Professor Grimm has followed. Sergeant Buck donates three fifty, saying, "I've got a great name for Dankula's autobiography: Atlas Pugged." Ooh, that's not. I was going to call it. I was actually going to call it Meme Camp. <laughs> <laughs> Meme Camp. <laughs> you know, you, nice, nice thing to. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta break, you gotta like branch out too, because like meme comp, so, you know, that'll get the, that'll get a certain uh, demographic. I think Atlas Pugged will bring in the end cap set too, and um, all that shit. And then you just gotta come up with a dog pun for a Noam Chomsky book, and you're you're pretty much golden. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a big Chomsky fan. I've seen that tattoo. Yeah, used to be, used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Doc, Doc Squiggums donated two dollars. Hey Nick, tell Dank the story of the squigaming. Have fun. P.S. Got a new job, so some shekels for my moon juice. Um, the closest thing I can figure to what he's actually talking about is the time that he regaled the entire Discord about the time that he banged a trap. Um, all right. He's very proud of it. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, as, as a fellow connoisseur yourself, you can uh, <laughs> you can attest to why one might be proud of that. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. A yeah. lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that's what he was talking about. Because if not, I just <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I just outed them. <laughs> hey, off to your room. Okay. All right, you're gonna. We'll we'll get you sorted in a bit. There it is. Yeah, came in with her motorcycle helmet. That was fun. So yeah. Oh my god. That's. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna end up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna end up in jail now because I mentioned uh, Doctor Squiggums and my own progeny in the same five minute span that's got to be some kind of abuse uh all the same uh i love you our server uh i love our server getting raided our server's getting raided again that's uh yeah my discord uh found out uh, um <laughs> was, well, uh, that's something well, you're gonna need to watch oh, out for no no uh, no no, no. It's, it's it's fine it's fine uh we we get uh we get see the the, the, the funny thing about raids on the saints discord is that nobody really altogether has any idea what the fuck kind of weird ass fucking cult they're getting to engage with so it's yeah. like the mods they won't even ban or anything they'll just shepherd them into the not safe for work it's like you got clown porn but we love clown porn let's go for it so yeah apparently, apparently a lot of the people from our discord have been banned <laughs> <laughs> We have that effect on people. We are very often... There's a lot of discords that don't like us. Well, you're, you're a but, diaspora yeah. now, aren't you? What is it? You're a proper diaspora now. You don't even have a homeland anymore, do you? No, no. Well, that's, that's the thing is as well. We, we we got our discord back up and running. Take it you heard about all that shit where the discord just completely nuked us. Mm. Yeah, they got rid of us because of the sheer amount of poo porn. Was that, that what it was? Because I saw some yeah. of that cropping up before. I'm like, okay, this is going to be... Um... I figured it was actually just one of ours because I don't know everyone that's in there, and honestly, I don't. I don't spend as much time in our Discord as maybe I ought to, so 
when I get in there and I see that really weird shit, I'm like, well, this place went to shit. Um, no, it was <laughs> kind of reminds me of what it looked like last time I was here. <laughs> I pretty much live in mine. I'm, I'm in the voice chat in mine every night. In the private rooms, that's where we, we all hang out and discuss, yeah. discuss the finer the things fun. in life. Very, very highbrow conversation. The finer elements. Thousand Island dressing and scat porn. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much. Yeah, we, we we sometimes even go on Twitch and uh, find a streamer who's dumb enough to have his Discord open, and then we post poo porn, <laughs> and they open it up and stream. Uh, I don't do that. Other people do that. Yeah, what am I talking about? I don't do that. <laughs> there's, there's, there, there's definitely a reason we don't actually stream the Discord itself here, even if we weren't Never getting rated. That. Half of the shit Doctor Squiggums puts yeah. out there is not anything that uh, that needs to be uh, needs to be needs to be expressed or, or looked at. A quick check, real quick. Okay, uh, let's see. Getting some. Uh, I got a follow. A follow. A hundred bits from. Sean Hindu, the uh, cheer 100, Count Dankula has mm, nine. No, read it out, read, read it out. I don't care about it. I know who he is. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> I'm just, no, no, I'm just trying, to, I was trying to put it together. Yeah, he is a, you have a nine and three quarter Venus. Hmm. Your, your people love you, dude. They love you and your Venus. No, there's a whole, there's a whole meme about <laughs> that. Fucking There's a meme. Shit. Right? It's like, well, it, it yeah. sounds impressive until you realize that it's in metric. Mm. No, no, no. This uh, I don't want to say it because fucking like because I get roasted for it all the time. You wouldn't like you wouldn't think you could get made fun of for having a big penis, but you can. Oh no, I'm I'm becoming increasingly aware of this. Yeah, after I'll say this much: after Kilroy, my reputation, um, my reputation got a little more interesting. People, it wasn't just like you're a drunk. It's like you're a drunk and you fuck subscribers. And then other people like you can't get laid. And it's like, well, guys, listen. I need you to be on the same page if you're gonna try and roast me on Twitter, okay? You can't keep going back and forth. It's gonna it's a bait and switch, everyone's gonna get confused. Holy shit. Um got one bit from Caligator, cheer one. I love our server getting rated joy. Uh and he says for another bit it's actually pretty bad. I'm not surprised. Bear in mind who's here. Um Doc Squiggums for another dollar RIP the Saints server well soon we have to find a new server thanks to the fans of a man who can't accept that traps are in fact gay. It's okay Dank. Just come out. No, no that's fine if he wants to be a flat earther that's his right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so that's the, that's the thing is everyone discusses the question are traps gay or not. The question we should be asking is should you care? Mm. <laughs> I swear to Christ, no. The best, the best answer I ever heard from that question came um, from Lacey Green of all people, because she, for one thing, really? well, she wasn't, she wasn't aware of the, uh, she wasn't aware of the, uh, the meme around it, right? And I was in a conversation with her one time. This is like when she was first starting to talk to people who weren't in her universe yeah. circle, and um, yeah, and I asked her one time, like, a traps case. She's like, "What do you mean by traps?" I'm like, "A very passing, very, you know, very passing transsexual." Uh, pre-op and her answer was well it depends on how you feel afterwards like, yeah I felt that one. Yeah, expand and she's like well i mean if afterwards you're thinking to yourself wow i had sex with that really hot girl at the club then maybe it's not gay but if you walk away thinking dick is tasty maybe you're a little gay <laughs> whatever you know <laughs> nothing wrong with that um <laughs> 100 bits in from Marcus Rowley. This will be the last one before we move on to this last story. It's okay, Harry. The wand chooses the wizard. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you figured out the, the deck meme at this point. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to pick up on it. I'm not much, I'm much yeah. so certain. Yep. Um, this last story we've got here is something I thought you might, uh, you might get a little uh, kick from. I know I did. Uh... Prime Minister Theresa May accuses Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn of putting mayo on her... Fr I mean, of mansplaining. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm getting these so confused. I'm wondering what kind of cake she's upset about. Um, Britain's Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn has got some splaining to do. Ooh, NBC News. These guys are... Oh, beautiful writing. I love it. Uh, that's according to British Prime Minister Theresa May, who on Wednesday accused Corbyn of mansplaining International Women's Day to her. <laughs> what a thing you mansplain as well. I know. <laughs> it's like you couldn't have a, a better fucking person do it either. It's like, who's going to mansplain Women's Day to Theresa May? <laughs> Jeremy fucking Corbyn, that's who. 
And now, uh, yeah, the two clashed during a weekly question and answer session in the House of Commons when Corbyn attacked May for a meeting with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam of Saudi Arabia, a nation notorious for suppressing women's rights. No shit. Um, no, no worse than Britain, though. Am I right, Jeremy? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> uh, I'm right. Uh, a day before the annual worldwide commemoration of the women's rights movement. Tomorrow is International Women's Day, a chance to both celebrate on how far we've come for on equality for women, Corbin said, but also to reflect on how far we still have to go. Not just in this country, but around the world. Hmm. It's kind of a sad thing when you like we, we swing so far back now. It's like I mean I'm just waiting for Jeremy Corbyn to be called uh, Islamophobic for uh, daring to call out the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Well, that's the thing is we all the Islamophobic part wouldn't uh, really surprise me because we all know how he feels about Jews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. Corbyn's pretty woke. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, we he's the gift socialism. that keeps... We need socialism, but only for white people. Sort of like a national socialist. <laughs> Perhaps. Something along those lines. Are you calling, are you calling Jeremy Corbyn a Nazi? Because I don't think he even owns dogs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if he did own dogs, he'd probably just consider it a cohabitation because he's not trying to, like, you know, you can't own people in this country. It's a dog. You can it's, if you're an handicap. It's my fur baby. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough to a dog. Now, here, let me recite some Trotsky to you. Um, without missing a beat, May replied, Well, first of all, can I thank the right honorable gentleman for telling me that it is International Women's Day tomorrow? I think that's what's called mansplaining. I love how you fucking, you politicians just, they spend half the time, like, cracking jokes and throwing shade at each other. That's oh, that's what Parliament is. <laughs> Parliament doesn't really do anything <laughs> but, these days. <laughs> it's, 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 basically, it's basically like a, a, a continual live action whose line is it anyway. And Except at the end of it, everyone ends up having to pay for it. Um... Oh, the quip drew laughter from the chamber, but May wasn't done yet. She later tweeted the official Oxford English Dictionary definition of the word to Corbin. That Oxford included mansplain in the dictionary? We'll take anything nowadays, yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just going to write to them and be like, please include the word cummies in your official, uh, <laughs> in your official breakdown, please. Um, to mansplain, verb, informal, explaining something to someone, typically a woman, in a manner that they need to hear because they just don't get it with their tiny lady brains. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I've been having this thing where words pop into my vision when I'm thinking of it. I'm regarded as condescending or patronizing. I mean, shit. Who doesn't want to condescend to the fucking Prime Minister of the UK? Yeah, especially mm. when she's Theresa May. Would you like to offer Theresa any support in this fight against this rampant sexism from Jeremy Corbyn? Stand down, vote in all confidence, get her the fuck out because she's no idea what the fuck she's doing. Go be a good feminist and stop accomplishing shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mansplaining. When a man explains something to a woman that she already knows has gained popularity in the vernacular as a result of the hashtag MeToo movement. Um, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein ex mansplained where the casting couch was and then Jennifer Lawrence's career happened. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now it's, uh, which has put a spotlight on the gender inequality and sexual harassment that women face. International Women's Day has been held annually on March 8th for more than a century and celebrates the achievement of women while also calling for gender parity around the world. Unless we're talking about Iran or Saudi Arabia, in which case we need to understand that that's just their culture, and it's a beautiful culture, and it's a religion It's a beautiful peace. culture where a woman can be dragged into the town square and whipped a hundred times because she showed her ankle. Mm. <laughs> you know, if we could sort of like roll that back and just sort of keep the no driving thing, because, I mean, yeah. as a motorcyclist, I can tell you, you, bitch, you don't need to be checking your Insta when you when you're taking off from that from that stop, okay? Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> right on red does not mean run me over while taking a right and smearing me along the ground. Not just saying, but um, 
Now, actually, on, on, on Sunday, we actually covered, because what was it? So, like, a handful of uh, Saudi activists, um, mostly mostly female, women activists, uh, who were instrumental in, like, fighting for the right to drive, which they're going to be getting uh, at the end of next month, I believe, um, were just detained for working with shadowy foreign elements to undermine the social fabric of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad. Uh, we, I'm glad we took the time to to like throw some shade at the biggest lefty in all of UK politics because he, he tried to guess not really explaining what International Women's Day was to a woman who probably didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he was probably just making a speech. She just decided to interrupt him, <laughs> like 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 what well, like most women do. Fem won't let you get. Won't let you get a word out, will they? <laughs> Fem interrupting. What was that? Fem interrupting. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's shit. Was it? Uh, I think it was Notch. It's like it was accused of mansplaining. He's like, no, I'm not mansplaining. You just can't understand. Hmm. Holy shit, man! It's, oh no, it's fucking poetry, isn't it? I love it. I think I think it's because Notch is at the point where he has fuck you money. He can just sit back and go, "What are you gonna do? Fire me? Oh, I'll buy you." Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's he's straight up. He's straight up. Uh, like I mean, he's straight up routinely. Um, <laughs> Less than a billionaire. That. Yeah, well, no, yeah, people are like, how can you say that? He's like, because I have enough money to not give a fuck. Mm, you get that Minecraft money, and all of a sudden, yeah. a bunch of like, f freaked out lefty parents are like, snatching tablets away from their children. Like, what are you playing? It's Roblox. Looks like Minecraft. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a fucking. It's this it, It's just such a trip though to see like the the entire world just still stumbling and stumble fucking over itself like this over and over again. I mean, here we've now got uh, like yeah, Britain's biggest lefty is a mansplainer. Theresa May is gonna become a feminist icon. Uh, Saudi Arabia ought to be uh, praised for their uh, grand steps towards gender equality, and um, mayonnaise is still an excellent condiment. I don't care what some people say. Mayo splaining. Mayo splaining. <laughs> well, do you remember? Do you remember? Like, what was it? There was um, they came up with a thing. It was years back. I think it was like man slamming. Man slamming. Oh, yeah, it was a thing, and it sounds as sexual as like as as coom on a cake, but it, I guess what it was was that um, so because the feminist notion was that uh, yeah, like men are just you know they just walk through them oh you know so they're like yeah men are always dominating the sidewalk let's like basically they were like we're gonna shoulder check them like, have fun with that honey <laughs> Bang, so bang into men like try and actually shoulder check in yeah. a man yeah that's fucking funny well i tried coming up with the because uh, they were said so that was the man juke i tried to get the uh the the no the the man slam i tried to get the fem juke going so you know you know the juke when you're on the field, yeah. and it's just like, whoa, whoa nope. Yep. Yeah, just fem juke. So, like, you know, if you're a man who wants to stand for true gender equality, uh, or if you're, like, in a big hardcore MRA or something, like, anytime you're walking down the sidewalk, if you see a woman walking down the same way, just kind of, like, guide yourself so you're coming up on her, and then juke the shit out of her. That's right. Juke her like you're playing for the goddamn Patriots. Just not here, so no one can get that. All, all what you do is just whatever you're carrying, just hold it like a fucking football and fucking charge <laughs> any of the man. Boom! Just body check her. Just grab a fucking suplex or DDT her <laughs> through through the through the bonnet of a car. <laughs> just, you know, just <laughs> just throw it through a windscreen real quick. <laughs> or, or it depends what state you live in. If she body checks you, if they've got stand your ground laws. <laughs> Just pull out like a collapsible asp. Oh no! I think his I think his British potato internet has gone down. We will see. We will see. All the same, I'm gonna see if there's anything more going on here. So uh, let's see. Hundred bits came in from Marcus. Uh, Kick a trend. He donated five dollars. Everyone knows traps are gay. The real question is after a sex change, are they virgins again? This whole show has taken a very interesting twist that I really should have seen coming. Hmm. So, Marcus is still frozen. That was a pretty good uh, overall uh, sort of freeze that he did. And uh, now we're back there. Can't start video, but that's fine. The mandatory freeze. This is all part of the uh, the format, by the way. If, if, if any of you are new to the show, you know that this is just how it works. Um... We're going to be seeing if we can get Marcus back. 
He'll be back one way or the other, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna. What the hell is happening now? Now he's calling me from the other one. This isn't making any sense. See, look at this. This isn't even me fucking this up. Like I thought my I thought my my production skills were just garbage, but. I guess, uh, a, um, a, my, there we go. My remote village internet kind of screwed up there. <laughs> the, the village I'm internet. Back. The village internet. We need to go and, pr we need to go and pray to the Wi-Fi gods to get it back. <laughs> I mean, what happened? I mean, like, you know, I hear village, so I'm wondering, did, like, one of the gatherers, uh, pulling berries together for the, for the grand feast knock into one of the ethernet cables or something? Probably something like that, yeah. Probably, probably, you know, some kind of bug landed on one of the wires that comes out of the village and shook it a little and just sort of knocked all the internet off the wire. <laughs> so, yeah, made, made the internet lose its balance, it fell off the wire, and it got cut off. That's that's how that's how technology works, by the way. Oh yeah, no, I mean, no, I've I've, I've seen I've I've seen the documentaries um, on you know British telecom. Um, it usually involves a pigeon. Like, just sort of, <laughs> just tie a bit of copper wire to a pigeon, and then wherever it lands, put a post there, and all of a sudden you've hooked up all of Yorkshire with high-speed fiber. How good! <laughs> <laughs> I know my shit. You, you ain't pulling the wool over my eyes, even if that's all you do. Where's sheer sheep? Huh. Uh, right. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna be. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. And by the way, uh, you missed it, but Kekatrani did donate five dollars, saying everyone knows traps are gay. The real question is, after a sex change, are they virgins again? That's that's a few levels too deep for me. Mm -hmm. We're getting into some like real Socrates shit. We're gonna need to call Rucka Rucka Ali in. Uh, yeah. He and his newfound uh, love of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> what would Diogenes say? Doesn't matter. So we're gonna uh, I'm gonna pull up a random number generator, and this is where the this is where the fun part begins. Um, not that many people in the waiting room. I'm kind of surprised by that, to be honest. All the same, let's just double check, make sure everything's muted. Good, good, good. Okay, so right now there are a whopping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven waiting. So we're going to go between 1 and 10 and see if something happens. First number is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, we've had this motherfucker in here before. Uh, Sir de Cuche. Is that the right one? Is it? It says slatter pants. Why? No. There we go. There we go. Dropping him in. Sir de Cuche. Yeah. Is that it? Did I get it right? Oh, wow. I actually fucked that up on my end. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm really good at that. There we go. Yep, you're here with the you're here with the Dank himself. Welcome. Well, Dank, it's actually quite an honor to speak to you, and uh, also congratulations to you and Sue on the whole engagement thing. I'm Thanks coming very to much. That. Yeah, uh, me and uh, me and my uh, fiance are coming to the end of that, and uh, in July we're tying the knot. Ah, uh, congratulations, man! Well done. And I, uh, yeah. I, I, I encourage everyone in the chat right now to uh, type one to uh, to celebrate the nuptials and uh, type F to pay respects to the uh, the, the sadly <laughs> forgotten sex lives of these two virile young men. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! You see, she's a teacher, and, and uh, you're a fourteen-year-old boy gonna... in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a 31 year old man sitting out uh, who does night shift for AP for a coal company. Huh. Right on. So when are you uh, when are you when are you tying the knot then? Uh, July 14th, Bastille Day. Oh. And um, Dank, I mean, will will it be will it, will it be like Gerbil's birthday that you pick or something? Uh. <laughs> no, mine's mine's in June, June next year. Ah, putting it off. <laughs> Play the field a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I need, I need all my videos get demonetized, man. I need time to <laughs> save up. <laughs> well, for me and uh, Mecca, she's actually in the. Uh, she's normally in the server, and she should be on right now. But she's currently driving back from her parents' place. Uh, it's been together six, pushing seven years now of us just being together. So it just it was one of those things you just made sense to, to go for. Year two, we, we kind of looked at each other in year two. It's like, we're getting married, aren't we? And she's like, yeah. 
Okay, how long do you think this will last? I don't know. <laughs> so. No, that's, that's, that's a fucking encouraging. And it's like, well, yeah, we should get married. You know, it could be a good you know, two, two to five years of our life. It could be the best <laughs> two to five years of our life. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no. The best part about it was, is while this was all going on, we and her were dating. After like year one, she we started hanging out with my family a bit more, and my brother's wife is just sitting there watching us, physically revolted by the fact that we we're that cute. We were being cute, and not like meaning to be cute, just like sitting there and just like you know that little thing. She's just like, oh god, will you stop? It's disgusting. That Get like, a room. I'll be honest. That sounds pretty gay, bro. Pretty gay. <laughs> you gotta get, you gotta, yeah, it, you gotta get yourself a lady with a nub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. Everyone knows there was only one direction the stream could have gone in. So I mean, who would care? Yeah. It, it was either it was either gonna be Nazi jokes or trap jokes. Because I mean, what's left in the world <laughs> of comedy? Nothing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, although I do have some good news. Uh, remember the last time I was on the midweek, I had stabbed myself. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I finally got the bill for that, and it's not four. It's not four digits, so uh, it's only like three hundred dollars. So nice. awesome. That's a pretty. That's, a, that's, that's, good. Why, that's why I love our free healthcare because if I get stabbed, I can get it stitched, sewn up for absolutely free. Of course, I will be sitting in the waiting room for four days, but <laughs> but and it will get probably done by a nurse who's on the thirty seventh hour of her forty eight hour shift. You know, Ooh. so she might, she might, you know, accidentally sue my hand to my head. <laughs> but, you just, but it's free. <laughs> you walk out, you, you, you get home and you call the hospital and be like, it's a, a bit of a problem. I came in with a stab wound four days ago and was finally treated. Well, that's normal turnaround time. What's the problem? Well, I can't do this <laughs> shit. Why not? Because instead of sewing up my wound, she sued my asshole shut. <laughs> I, th I, I mean, I was, I was going to say something during the procedure, but I figured she's the professional. She knows what she's doing. So. <laughs> By the way, le legitimately, I actually had one friend. There was a, there was an incident one night. I won't go into too many details, but he got slashed down the back of his neck with a knife, yeah. and he went to the went to the hospital. What sat in the waiting room, sitting there like keeping the towel on the back of his head like that, just to stop stop the blood. And then eventually, see how like a wound on its own can sometimes the blood can stop, you know, if it's left for long enough. Eventually it stopped, so he sat with the towel off and he just waited. 19 hours he was waiting to get seen to. Oh, and by the time he got in, it had actually scabbed, right? The slash wound oh, had actually oh, scabbed, oh, right? And the doctors basically went, oh, that's scabbed up too much. We can't stitch that. <laughs> right? And just, <laughs> just sent him home, <laughs> right? So he has this big fucking crazy fucking scar running down the back of his neck and it's this big wide as fuck thing. It's wide, even though it was just a slit with a knife, but fucking cause it like scarred like that, like that was it. They just didn't, they just sent him home. He waited 19 hours for nothing. <laughs> he could have <laughs> went home and just went to his bed. They went back to like a staff meeting and they're like, for, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're doing a fantastic job here. The medical care is so good. Our waiting room healed this man. Oh. <laughs> I didn't speak to the waiting room. It has miraculous powers. <laughs> it's like, it's like who, knows, who here knows what coagulation means? Oh, you all went to medical school in Belize. I see. Well... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If you're if you're going to to a medical school in Belize, the proper answer is marrying a Canadian to get out of Belize. Go there, divorce him, and then uh, start showing your tits on the internet. Is that is that, is you talk, is that a linity? That's a little linity count joke. Yes, a little bit of an linity joke. I was just thinking we could actually make a great joke about like you know the UK's uh, enthusiasm for immigration by saying like they want to import more doctors, and all of a sudden they get a whole bunch from sub-Saharan Africa. And it's like. Who can tell me? Doctor, doctors and engineers? Yeah, who can who can tell who amongst this new staff can tell me the best way to treat appendicitis? Ooh, the ch you take the chicken and you cut the throat open of the chicken and you pour the blood into the thing. You didn't say the prayers and rub it on the man's genitals. I was gonna, then you take that. I was gonna go with. I was going to go. With, first, we must find an albino. We will drain the blood of the albino. <laughs> One of, one of the experiences I had, right, I was like 12 years old, right, and this was in Portugal, I was on holiday in Portugal with my family, and I was walking through the beach, and I don't know what it was, I was like probably about knee deep in the water, 
<laughs> and I'm just like walking at the beach, 12 years old, and then something, I don't know what it was, a spike like legit went through my foot. I actually Ooh. went right through my foot. And I'm like walking out like, what the hell is that? And I actually had to like wrestle my foot off the spike because I, I didn't know what it was. And then when I started walking, you could just see the clouds of blood in the water. So I started freaking out, get rushed to hospital, right? And I'm getting like dragged through this horrible as shit hospital. There's patients like lying on the floor just on blankets, just on blankets. And they've got like neck braces and all that shit on. They're just lying on a blanket on this like dirty, dirty floor. And I get dragged into this room and I'm, I'm screaming and all that. They didn't have any anesthetic for my foot. So they, oh, had, no. they had to stitch it up like raw, just fucking no anesthetic. And I'm sitting there screaming with two female nurses like holding my legs, another male nurse is like holding my arms down. And at the top, I have like this 60 year old nurse with the biggest tits that I've ever seen in my entire life. And my head is like buried in between these tits, but I'm screaming. <laughs> Like an agony, and she's just sitting rubbing my head, going, "I, I, I think there's some, I think, I think there's some mechanical problems with your motorboat there." <laughs> I'm just sitting screaming in absolute agony and freaking the fuck out, and she's going, "I, I, man, me, no, shh, 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 <laughs> that was the thing. I went home like five days later, and then when I had to go, it was a few weeks, and I went to like my own doctor's to remove the stitches. And she looked at it and she went, "What the fuck stitching is this?" And they were like, "What have they used?" <laughs> and all that. And she fucking it took her half an hour, and she had to get help to get the stitches out my foot because they were that badly done. Fucking grade seven Ooh. home at course. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, it works. It works on you to patch clothes or human beings. Just yeah, crook shank. Just keep doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> hit, hitting you with a fucking sailor's needle one of those like hook claws oh. that you just tie a piece of wire to <laughs> just sew your sails up oh. it's fine he's a scotsman when have they ever walked anywhere <laughs> back, to, fuck it, back to the uk with you it's like well no actually we're gonna stay for the remainder of our vacation while our son's foot smells like cheese Hmm. <laughs> just that smell of almonds coming from the wind nothing to worry about <laughs> doctors are just like no 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 don't worry about green green is a fine color it's when it's yellow that it's a problem what about that yellow no that yellow is fine you want a canary yellow that's when you worry <laughs> i mean that's pretty much the future of the nhs anyway isn't it <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna part. They're gonna part it off, and it's just like all of a sudden, like you know, instead of the pain, instead of like the 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 you know, from one to ten, what's your pain level? It's just gonna be a series of Sherwin Williams like paint swatches, like <laughs> <laughs> on a range from brown to mauve. Where would you say your pain falls? <laughs> Why is this happening? Uh, somewhere in the pink range, uh, bubble gum, I believe. <laughs> hmm. So we're going to push on here. Well, we got you here. You got anything you want to say? She'll whore out, pimp, promote, anything like that? No, nope, I got nothing, man. Nothing. I got nothing. Nothing? Not even the show? <laughs> hey, like I said, I got, I got called into work today. So you I'm here in the wait. office and there's nobody else here. I'm on the, um, with you guys. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a perfect, like, you know, chance to, like, shill the show to all of the people who are watching. Well, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, as always, <laughs> Thursday night show's great, and uh, Sunday night show's awesome, so, you know, yeah, hey, guys, no, no, give these people your money. Mm. Let's get, let's get, let's let Nick get real alcohol for once. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, that would be nice to drink real alcohol for once instead of this. Well, yeah, yeah, we can give we can give Nick the uh, we can give Jeff the paint thinner, but let's let Nick actually get something that's actually tasty. Yep, actually, uh, just to explain real quick, so uh, uh, Marcus, are you familiar? Uh, are you familiar with Death Shots? Have you seen any no. of those? So somebody sent Jeff a bottle of this Polish liquor called um, what's it called again? Um, Spiritus is a big new. Spiritus is a big new. It's as flammable right on the bottle. It's wonderful. 
Uh, right. Yeah, well, it got to a point where, like, people would super chat him and shit to, like, get him to take shots, and I thought he was just faking until I tried some out at Kilroy, and yeah, it's like, it, it's like drinking paint thinner. The shit makes you, you feel like your esophagus is being stripped away at a, like, molecular level for about 20 <laughs> minutes. It just hurts. It's so bad that, like, when you take real Tennessee bourbon as a chaser, it, it's soothing. It's calming. <laughs> and Holy uh, shit. Well, yeah, and it's a fun thing. Like, you know, people will people will throw money at this show to get Jeff to poison himself with that kind of garbage. And then we'll throw money at this show so that I can actually stop drinking shitty beer. <laughs> it's a wonderful dynamic. He gets dildos at his P.O. box. I get computer monitors. You know, it it, it all comes out in the wash. So I uh, definitely appreciate the audience for, for all of their uh, wonderful support and their wonderful modding of our Discord. Look at that. Look at that. There's not a piece of poo. There. I probably shouldn't have said it. Wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. There's probably shit all up in the other one, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Sierra de Cousy, thank you for joining us, homie. I'm going to roll. Anytime, Nick. Did, does Jeff normally kick you guys out, or do you just leave? Uh, I think he kicks us to uh, okay. VC1. Oh, VC1. Okay, we, I can do that. Boom, there we go, and he's gone. All right, rolling next. Uh, let's see. Eight, nine, eleven. Do a quick roll. And ooh, yeah, number eight. Nightmare. This is actually a friend of mine. I got to meet her recently. She was complaining last time I talked to her too about hey. her never getting on the show. So here she is. What the fuck? That's not the one I need. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it swapped up. It swapped up randomly when. Uh, oh, sh there it is. Now I picked the wrong one. Moose. All right, hold on. Talking Moose. Hello, sorry about sorry. that. Yep, sorry about that, Talking Moose. That was a fat finger on my account. We'll uh, try to get in for the next roll. No hard feelings. I think he's cool. All right. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is why we leave this shit to Jeff, is because I'm bad at it. So, hello, Nightmare. You have finally made it in, and here we are. You're talking with Count Dankula. Hey, Dank. How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? Yeah, tired. Same. <laughs> it's like two in the morning here. <laughs> ew. I have a question for you, hon. Can I do yeah. a food video on you? Can you do a what? Food video on you. A food video on me? It's going to be all about mayonnaise. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, for a bit of, for a bit of, uh, just to clarify what that is. So, uh, our friend Melissa here um, actually does, she runs her own channel where she uh, creates recipes based on her favorite YouTube channel personalities. So, recently she did one which was, uh, I believe, a whiskey candy for me, right? Uh, yours was the rum, the Saints was the whiskey, lullaby, Jeff's was the holiday wings. Ah, there we go. Yep, and so basically, like, what, what, what if, if there was to be a food dedicated to, to you, what would, what would it be, and why would it be mayonnaise covered kielbasa? <laughs> no, hell no, no, it's like, uh, well, the problem is, like, a lot of Scottish cuisine you can't really get anywhere, because I eat haggis and black pudding all the time. I eat black pudding every morning for my breakfast, which essentially is... Putting it bluntly, it's coagulated pig's blood. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's it's yeah. based off of what food you would inspire me to make off of your content. That's fine, then. That's all right. Because uh, I know that haggis is actually illegal in the U.S. <laughs> which I find yeah, very well, well, there's only one part of haggis that's illegal, which is why making tailed features is proving to be a little bit of a problem. Mm. Yeah. yeah. His is the Neo one, and it's weird. Sorry, what's illegal in the U.S. about haggis? Lungs. Yeah. Seriously, we're not allowed to eat lungs. Yep. No. Nope. We can eat liver. We can eat. We can eat. We can eat. We. I mean, if you you know what Rocky Mountain oysters are, right? Yes. No, not you. I know you know. <laughs> Dank. Do you know what Rocky Mountain oysters are? That. I know it's uh. It's not what it sounds like. I know no, that. They are I know not oysters. It's, yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard the term before, and I think it means something kind of lewd. Is uh, what, what is Rocky Mountain oh, I'm Oysters? To, I'm gonna leave it to our I'm gonna leave it to our uh, our cooking YouTuber guest here to explain what Rocky Mountain oysters are to our Scottish friend. Bull nuts. Oh wow! Okay. Yep. Nah, yep. The the nards of a bull. Um, 
I don't know if they're steamed like dumplings or whatnot, but yeah, that's that's basically what Rocky Mountain oysters are. Because for some reason, when some people get into a mountainous, landlocked uh, environment, my, like hundreds of miles from the ocean, they think, yeah, you know what? I really want to have some oysters. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's like it's like eating shrimp at a North Vegas diner or some shit. It's just a bad idea. But uh, yeah, so we're allowed to eat bull's nuts, but apparently sheep's lungs are not good. <laughs> the fuck is that about? Why? No idea. I mean, we, we, just, to, we, we just don't let anything go to waste, man. No, no. We're, well, almost, I mean... we're almost as bad as China. <laughs> so we draw, we said we draw the line at cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you say now. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, well, I mean, like you know, the dogs are needed to 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 drive the Jews out, right? <laughs> no oh, comment. Boy. No comment. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't. I'm, that's what I'm here for. This is an American show, and they can't arrest me for what I say. I don't think. <laughs> I think the cops are on the way to my house right now. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg <laughs> is personally going to like repel through my window back there and be like, "Oh, uh, Bob, nope, you th- uh, cops can't get you, but I fucking can." He just starts doing the robot. <laughs> Man, <laughs> moon walking across your room towards you. His head just one eighties though. Even though he's got his back to you, his head's looking right at you. Like that's a- actually terrifying. That's actually terrifying. I scared myself <laughs> with that one. <laughs> So it basically looks like every Star Trek episode with the Borg in it. <laughs> like, welcome to Facebook. Resistance is futile. We have updated our privacy policy. <laughs> Do you feel like you have privacy? Not really good, then it's working. <laughs> so, uh, off the top of your head, Melissa, what, what would you what would you create? To honor uh, Dankula here, I mean, would it be like a like a Chinese stir fry featuring mostly dog or uh, uh, matzo bread? Uh, it would be a macaroonish type of dish. Um, the cookies, macaroon cookies. Yeah, yeah. It would be I along like the lines of that. I like that. Yeah, I like macaroons. I uh, I eat those. Well, if you if you get a PO box, she will like send them to you after she's done making them. Um, I'm too scared to open a PO box because I'm genuinely terrible. See how they're getting sent poo or ants or something like that. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, there are people that there are people that genuinely want to kill me. So I'm like worried about getting sent a bomb. So like I would open a PO box. <laughs> Just like it, you open it after like uh, like the copious amounts of duress from fans, and then it happens, and you get zapped, and it's like you know. Your family's yeah. just got to ask, like, after how many decades of dealing with the Irish have we still got this problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you'd probably, no, you're, I can only imagine your PO box would probably, like, work out worse than uh, iDubs, honestly. It's like, yeah. Like, hey, man, I bought this fresh salmon steak three weeks ago that I to send you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think one. Th- one thing that I'm worried about. And I'm amazed. I'm amazed that no one has done this yet. Uh, a GPS tracker fitted with a battery. You could find out where like any YouTuber that has a PO box lives. Like you could send it. It would go to their PO box. They come and collect it and then take it back to their house. Boom. You you find out where they live. <laughs> Geolocate the living shit out of your favorite Ex- YouTubers. Yeah. Exactly. I'm amazed no one's done that. That would scare the shit out of me. I just love, you know, I can almost picture it now, especially as late as it is, you sit around looking at the state of YouTube between, like, what YouTube's been doing and what, like, you know, what popular shit, what shit's getting popular from, like, the Jake Pauls all the way through, like, the cringe streams and the shouting yeah. streams, And you're like, how can I make this worse? Oh, geolocation and murder. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> No, the people people managed to find out what village I live in. It was actually my uh, Google Home that doxed me. I was messing around with it on stream and asking it all kinds of weird questions. And then I said, uh, Google, what's the weather like? And it turned around and says, the weather in, and said the name of my village. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a small village that I live in. So I was like, oh, shit. So people find out. People know where I live. This is this is no. why this is why you guys need guns again. The, that way, it's just like oh yeah, yeah. I mean, some people have been threatening to come around, but it's okay. I'm armed to the teeth like an American. Guns. We've we've got swords, man. We do it like men here. <laughs> 
Well, you got swords in Texas now. You're allowed your family swords. You just can't take it out in public with you. <laughs> oh, in Texas, you can you can you can carry swords in public now. In Texas, open carry swords. Yeah, open carry swords. Um, Is that I, I, I reckon? I think it was a weeaboo that started that law. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will defend the honor of my waifu pillow. <laughs> it's like the, it's like uh, introducing the honorable rep from uh, you know uh, Kilkenny, Texas, the honorable Jeremy. It's like uh, I I would prefer that you all refer to me as Jeremy San. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Well, you know I'm actually running for office this year. Really? I will be running. I will be running for state rep here in New Hampshire. And now a lot of people are like, oh, that's impressive. No, it's fucking not. 1.3 million residents. We have over 400 lower house reps. Basically, there are people representing cul-de-sacs in this uh, state. Fucking hell. You get paid a hundred dollars a year. You get a free. Uh, you get free car registration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, perks. You better believe I will be introducing an open carry sword bill um, here in, in the Granite State, here in, here in the good old New Hampshire. Like, what, well, what's, what's your biggest legislative accomplishment? I can carry a katana into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> the dueling bill didn't do so well, but apparently lots of people want to carry ornamental swords around. I would have known. It's like the new fidget spinner. Except I'm sorry, but I, I saw fights more entertaining than a gunfight, man. <laughs> <laughs> seen a few. Yeah. <laughs> what, you seen a few sword fights? Yeah, when I was when I was actually uh, someone t- someone tried to attack me with a sword one night when I was uh, a bouncer. No joke. Yeah. Oh please, no. We. Uh, I mean, Melissa is the. The, the guest here, but I mean, if she wants to insist on a story, I can sh- assure that she will. <laughs> Whichever, I'm fine. How the fuck do we know? You don't just start like, yeah, there's this time I saw a sword fight. Oh, no, right. Sword fights, like, uh, a lot of people around here that have, like, see how, like, mall samurai swords, mm-hmm. those mall swords. Um, I was uh, One night I was out in Castle Milk, and one guy had a machete, and one guy had the samurai sword, and they were trying to go at each other. But it was sort of like they were one would run at the other and the other would run back and then it would just go back and forth and then I think they got they did get hit a few times so their arms would open up and stuff like that. Uh, there was another another one. This actually happened uh, not far from me. Uh, a guy accidentally killed his friend with a sword because there was a fight that was happening, you know, gang fighting in the streets and all that. We don't have guns here, so everyone uses knives and swords. And uh, when he ran. They were all charging, and he ran like that. Now, this is the thing. You never see this in movies, right? But this this must have happened in real life in actual sword fights and stuff, right? He ran, and he's got all his friends running with him. So he does that to swing the sword. But what he did was he actually stabbed his friend behind him through the eye. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and then his brain and fucking killed him, right? <laughs> so fucking... That's, that's, yeah. That's a little bit horrible. That's yeah. a little horrifying. That was pretty fucked, yeah. Well, yeah, a, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there was a time, what, you saw a guy get, we, we, when you were a bouncer, you you saw a guy get stabbed in the eye with a screwdriver, and then he yeah, went that, back that. into the bar trying to order another drink. No, no, the, what happened was the guy with the, the guy with the, his eye was gone, it was like hanging out and shit like that, his eye was fucked, so like, we phoned an ambulance, the police came, and we dealt with all that shit. The, the very next day, the guy who did it tried to get back in. And we were just sort of sitting at the door looking at him like, no, you you literally stabbed a man in the eye yesterday. And he was just like, oh, well, I just thought I'd try my luck, boys. <laughs> oh, Lord. And we were just sort of sitting there like, what the fuck, man? The fucking stone's on this guy. <laughs> no, was- man, like, I, I know I stabbed someone in the eye, but can I get back in? I'm sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. I left the toolbox back at home. It's fine. Well, there was fucking. But there was the night that I got attacked. It was like uh, I managed to get away, but it was like a guy. He was just being a dickhead inside. I grabbed him, just did the whole grab and threw him out. He's shouting at us, going like, "I'll kick your head and I'll do this. I'll do that." And we're there's three of us standing at the door, and I'm just sitting there. Yeah, okay, buddy, okay, buddy, like man, and then he walked away, and it's this really, really huge long car park outside the club, and about an hour later, he came back, and he had his shirt off and everything, 
and he's like walking across the car park and we're we're shouting stuff at him going like that is your mum not put you in your bed yet and all that right just just you know we're talking because we're sitting there like there's three of us and one of him we're fine and then as he gets closer we can see he's got what looks like a pole like an iron bar and we're just like again three hours i'm not scared of an iron bar and then he got about like maybe like 15 feet away from us and that's when we went that's the fucking sword <laughs> and, we went, and at that point all of us went it was a case of we were all standing there like playing chicken with each other and then all three of us at the same time went no nah, fuck this like, we just <laughs> we just jumped back in and closed the door we, we called the cops he hung around outside kicking the door Go and get out here, get out here. But then all of this, like, honestly, like, three police cars just swarmed up to him and the guy threw the sword to the ground and, like, got on the ground and all that. Yeah. Well, he, hung a, he hung around for the cops to come because he's, he's a smart guy. <laughs> he's, it, was like, it was like that scene from uh, that Netflix movie, Bright. <laughs> just shows up, finds some random, long-haired, crazy, dirty Scottishman with a fucking claymore swearing he's going to slay a dragon. It's like, that's not a dragon, mate, that's a bouncer. <laughs> that was fucking that was funny man that was a good night yeah <laughs> like it. The, th- the thing was i was i was the, the head doorman so i was standing right at the very front with the two guys behind me and that's why so it would have been me that got it <laughs> it would have been me that got fucking hacked no but i, I just ran back in no getting in any, <laughs> any Highlander shit here. See, this—I mean, this, it almost makes me wish that, like, you know, the David Hogg dream of gun confiscation could happen, just so that we could have these kinds of sword fights. Can you, can you imagine gun-free America? Because we'd still be killing each other just as much, but we'd just get like—it yeah. wouldn't even be like they're, like sword fights would get passe. People would be bringing like morning stars out with them, just, like swinging a fucking flail over a bar fight. It's like massive piece of spiked iron into this dude's head. What happened? He looked at my girl funny, yo. Oh, there's a there's a there's a weapon that gets made in Scottish prisons, and you can make it out of a newspaper and a bit of string. And it's called there's a prison in Scotland called Berlini, right? And it's this weapon is called the Berlini brick. And what you do is basically you get a newspaper and you just fold it and fold it again. And fold it again and if you fold the newspaper like enough times like you've probably done this with a bit of paper yourself it becomes rock fucking hard and they just tie around it with a bit of string and you essentially have this weighted rock hard lump and in prison fights people literally use it as a flail like, <laughs> like in fights and everything wow. and the thing is you can you can like fracture someone's skull with this like you can do serious fucking damage <laughs> well, like, they, they, I just, I just love to hear like I just love to hear the charges being read out. It's like a murder in the first degree. What was the weapon used? A newspaper, sir. The Scottish like, Sun. Was he a <laughs> the Scottish Sun? Was the uh, was the victim a bad dog? Well, technically, yes, sir, but not in any way we can prove at the moment. <laughs> to be to be honest, that 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 does score you like hard man points. You can turn it in and go. I killed a man with a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking hardcore, ah. Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, over here, like, over here, the majority of it's just, like, fucking toothbrushes and shit. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I melted a toothbrush. I had, I, had a, I had a couple friends went to prison, and um, they both came out with, like, all of these great tricks on how to make cigarette lighters out of nothing at all. Oh, uh, yeah, was it the foil, the foil from chewing gum and a battery? battery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I've seen that. Oh, well, no, no, the worst one, the worst one I saw, though, because one of the friends who went to prison back in the day, he was he was a Russian, um, he was a Russian kid brought over by his mom. And I, you know, you like to think maybe it's just Russian culture that makes them so fucking Russian, yeah? No, it's in <laughs> fucking blood. Oh, my God. This kid's like, yeah, I learned to do the same thing using a wall outlet. I'm like... <laughs> you're gonna put some gum foil into the fucking mains, huh? Is that what you're gonna do now to light a cigarette? Is that what you, is that what we're up to? Yeah, it's great. This is the same guy though. He used to make his own ecstasy by uh, he basically just like collect random prescription um, pills from people. He'd yeah. crush them into dust and then he'd just add various like amounts of it to empty ginseng caplets. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he'd. he'd He'd make these things in great numbers and fill up an Altoids tin and then drive around a shit you not in a Camaro IROC Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'd drive around in a fucking Camaro just popping these things. It was like all of us can just like, you want to race? And it's just like, dude, there's nobody there. 
<laughs> so Melissa, you got any um any any questions? Anything you wanna you wanna say? She'll promote. Um, ask, not really. Anything? Nothing. Not even your own channel. Mm, well, yeah, my channel, but it's such a pain in the ass to look for. It's YouTuber Cooking on YouTube and Creator Cooking on BitChute. Yep, Creator Cooking on BitChute, uh, YouTuber Cooking on YouTube, and over on Twitch, it's Spirit Cooking. Just look up Spirit Cooking on Twitch. <laughs> I don't do streaming of me cooking because it's a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, those times you get John Podesta over for dinner, you know, and the two of you can just... Uh, you know, talk about playing in the blood of children and such. But yeah, no, definitely go and check out YouTuber Cooking. Um, she's got some pretty great recipes that she been, like that she just smashes out there based on her favorite channels thus far. Uh, she's done Magog, I believe, Poisoning the Well, right? Yep, uh, Magog's Dragon Steak, Poisoning the Well's Crinky, Kinky Creamed Cake, which they haven't figured out who's the top and who's the bottom on. No one that knows. That was a mistake, too. <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs> All Magon's Moist Sandwich. Um, you, uh, yours, which was the rum candy, the wizard candy, whiskey lullaby, and Jeff's holiday wings. All right. And soon, and coming soon, um, Dankulous, uh, haggis sandwich, I assume? No, I'm not doing a haggis sandwich. I'm <laughs> going to do macaroons. Oh, that's right, macaroons with mayonnaise, yes. Um. Ew. Oh my god, really? Come on! Fucking hell. I'm a big fan of mayo, but uh, yeah, even that sounds a little gross to me. So, uh, Nightmare, Melissa, always good to talk to you again. Can't wait to see you once more. Um, we'll get another gigantic fucking chimmy, yeah? Alright, sounds good. Yeah. So, we'll talk to you later. I'm gonna do a quick roll. There we go, dumped into VC1. Yeah, I actually met her when I was at Kilroy. She um, um, came by and we went out for some quality fucking Mexican food. I got a chimichanga, no lie. It was it was the size of my fucking head, man. I mean, nice. I, I looked at this thing and it was like, uh, like first I'm salivating and so hungry and then I'm looking at like, I don't even know how to attack this thing. It's like watching Attack on Titan. It's like, what do I do? What, what is the nape of its fucking neck? So, there's my bit of weebdom. Uh, let's do a quick roll here. We've got how many people in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1 out of 10. We've got 1, 2, 3. Oh, my boy Duckett. My boy Duckett. It's my boy Duckett's in the, in the house here. What's up, Hello. Du What's up, Duckett? Uh, how are you doing? It's not actually his name, but he's... he's Duke CT. Duke CT. We can call him yeah. Duckett. Ah, uh, yes. How are y'all doing? Hey, it's oh, been a while. Hmm. Yeah, it has been a while since you've been on the show. Yes. I, I know you've been holding up, mate. I have been feeling, um, doing good. I've just recently passed my college classes. Congrats. I am in, in a, you know, just doing a lot more streams of Kingdom Hearts 2 and doing great on that. Hopefully I'll finally beat this, uh, beat the thing hopefully by Monday if I just do more streaming stuff. It's getting ready for my podcast. It's going to come up uh, after this uh, interesting program. So, yeah, oh. check it out the Duke CP Lounge. So, uh, I am in a good place. Ah. Nice to <laughs> but, hear. Yeah, but um, I actually got an interesting... Well, I was actually planning to give the story a couple of weeks ago. No, oh, yeah. Uh, and everything else. But um, I want to ask you this. Uh, since you do follow me on Twitter, uh, Nick, and and such and if you haven't followed me on twitter it's duke ct by the way so you should join me i'm actually you know i talk wrestling and other bullshit but it's fun bullshit so um no, like, I actually... I like how thanks like just glaring in the screen like what's this gay shit <laughs> <laughs> i'm cool man <laughs> oh, what's up Ka uh thank you how you doing hope you're doing well oh, i've been doing well man how are uh, you well, doing hey well hey you <laughs> i mean uh, hopefully because man you, you went through some real stupid stuff by the way so i'm just as someone who is a uh, an idiotic american so I, i'm I'm, <laughs> I'm hopeful that you will power power through this and um you know you can make them money and make a uh you know uh i don't say lifetime because you know they wouldn't make a movie based on you because you're a male so you know uh, <laughs> maybe something like a no man i'm i'm pretty uh, happy but um uh, I know it was a rough experience something, but, something oh rather. fuck yeah, just like well, a, yeah, an, an HBO original movie starring Nick Frost. Yeah, 
Yes, and you. Oh dear, I can just been dropped. And you will, you, you will be played by Morgan Freeman. Am I still in the voice so, chat? So. Dumb. Oh no, you're not. You just got. You're out of voice chat for some reason. Why did that happen? Oh what? Yeah, but I can oh. still. No, 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 yeah, you're not you. I don't know. Can you get back in? Nope. Oh, did somebody? Did somebody? Hang on a second. Wait a second. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do some shit here. Oh, wait, that's the wrong oh, well. thing here. The ba doom ba doom ba doom. There you go. Yeah, that's the link directly da, da, back da, da. in. Otherwise, just jump back into the waiting room. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay, then. All right, and <laughs> and he's back. Good. Yeah. yeah. See, no he, idea what happened there. I mentioned Morgan Freeman, and he just you know. The racist part of the Count Dankula just freaked out. Yeah, well, I mean, like, after all those stories coming out about Morgan Freeman sexually harassing people, I'm sure Dank didn't yeah. turn around to see what that felt like. <laughs> yeah, I don't how, know how does it feel shit. like the voice of God saying, do you like that in you? <laughs> well, but... Yeah, Tits, uh, or get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> well, then he had the dude dated his, like, uh, granddaughter, so... Yeah, she she died as well. Her fucking lunatic boyfriend killed her while chanting Bible verses or some shit. Let's see. I don't yeah. know, but that's I, I'm worried about. I, I'm I'm worried about typing that in Google because I don't want to be like a you know I don't want to just have a Google just look at me you know wrongly and everything like you know you searching this real horrible you know, topic. You know? you know you know what they say though like when you see the Google, it sees you. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So you were saying well, before I, that you were saying before. Um, oh yes. Um, uh, follow this um, interesting, um, you know, stuff on Twitter. Um, you ever heard of this thing called a Universal Fan Con? It, ha it was supposed to happen. It was a convention. Uh, you know, all you know, all the, uh, you know, all the stuff that comes in with the convention and everything else, and. <laughs> And uh, I was actually, you know, hyping it up, and I followed some people who actually, you know, um, did, you know, did like, you know, work and actually was, uh, you know, just wanted to, you know, do all that type of stuff, doing like, um, you know, work with it, you know, doing like panels and such. I guess uh, what happened is like a week before the event, they uh, they postponed it. They postponed the entire event, and the reason why is because they ran out of money. They they were just wholly mismanaged. They were completely just. I mean, do you have all your your convention stories like um you know you you have heard the dude called uh the internet historian. Um, yeah. He, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know you see the stuff like dash cons or or for uh you know was that uh, uh wasn't it was um. That other furry convention and such, um, you know, Rainforest and such, which all the other stuff went, went wrong and everything. The thing is, I, I never seen this before, is that this convention uh, was so, it was like, they were talking all this stuff. It got like big guests and everything. But the thing is, before we, they did not, they they ran out of money. And you know why they ran out of money? Hmm. They, they planned it too big. They actually tried to. They actually went to get the uh, Baltimore uh, Convention Center, which is like, oh God, like they said. They and people who say and they tell and they um, the thing is about conventions is you do not want to book a convention center in your first year. And what did they do? They booked a convention center in their first year. And you know that's what I think. Uh, this is a dude named um Trey Doran who actually talks about this stuff. Uh, about conventions is, is if you do a convention make sure it's small make sure it's all this type of stuff uh make sure it's small make sure you can kind of like uh, people can go to your convention. don't get bigger guests just make sure you know uh do, do the simple stuff make it small and then grow into that but sadly most people just they just um put all this money and funny thing is they went in and spent over 300 grand into this and and and, and it's funny by the start of 2018, this thing, they took two years to plan this, by the way. Two years. By the start of this year, and the convention was only four months away, guess how many tickets they had? They sold? Guess. Six. Mm. Sorry, I was a little excited. <laughs> well, there's a six there. I like there. numbers. 
but it's Six. only 169 tickets. Ooh. Holy shit. Yeah. And this is a uh, convention that pretty much booked um, TV shows, uh, celebrities, like, um, I think Supergirl, people from Supergirl, people from like Luke Cage, uh, Netflix of Luke Cage, and well, did uh, the attendees have a good time? Oh, um, but <laughs> no, no. They, 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 in fact, they posted. Was it like the canceled. fire festival? They were just oh. stranded on an island with like like military no, the rations thing is... and, the, and, the, and the vague hopes that perhaps Ja Rule would show up in his personal helicopter to save them. Oh, if even worse. Oh, gosh, I, I got to find this, um, the article. of it's. I know it's from The Root, and it has their issues about The, the Root and everything, but they did a pretty decent article about it. And this was something, I'm not kidding you, um, right, I got to find it. it it's something um, they actually said in their PR statement that, look, we are really, really sorry about this, but... Trust me, when we, when you come to this fan con and such, you, if you're coming to Baltimore, be, make sure that you can come and talk to our screening of Avengers: Infinity War, so we can talk and deal with all these issues. So basically, they came from a convention, all the way down, to basically a a movie screening for Infinity War. That's pretty dope because I still haven't seen Infinity War, so I'd have totally bought the ticket to that. And here's the funny part. Well, I mean, can you uh, honestly, hang on, Doug, I want you to imagine this. Can you imagine me in the same room with the actress from Supergirl? One of us would get so annoyed. <laughs> I think they would love your voice, though. Oh, yeah, no, I just can't say who would get annoyed first. Like, you know, uh, like uh, uh, her, um, you know, for me um, being a relentless douchebag or um, me. For her talking about her career, mm. this is the number one rule. Number one rule when you when you become a new actor: don't date actresses ever, mm. ever. So and then and then uh, three weeks later, you're gonna be married to one Nick. So trust me, that's that's what's gonna probably happen. <laughs> she better have a dick then, huh? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! So, so you're launching, you're launching yourself a podcast soon, then, yeah? Hmm? Oh yes, it's gonna come out at ten at ten p.m. Yeah, nice. and such. Now, how long have you so, been doing yes. that for? Oh, since two thousand and I believe twelve, actually. Okay. And you I, do realize you know, that you just you you did just like you just prematurely busted your uh, your uh, promote and shill nut, right? I don't know. I, look, I, I, I will, you know, don't worry. I, I got plenty of nuts. I can bust them all night. Plenty. It's fine. Yes, that's all right. I got, <laughs> I, I'll be fine. And besides, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'm just going to be just continually rant and rave and get you all confused. And then I'll, I'll plug myself again. You can be like, what? what well, the? no, my oh. question now is, are you going to be going to next year's whatever the fuck con that was you were talking about? Oh, this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. no. Oh, oh, but the thing is, it's still in that whole postponed slash canceled thing. Which... That's the best time to buy tickets. They're so cheap. Oh, well. They're still saying they're going to do this again, which is, uh, <laughs> I'm like, wow. And But you know what? The funny thing is, though, and I think that this, this has somewhat of a happy ending to it. Um, the people who did all this other stuff, uh, the, the people who were around the con and everything, they actually set up a small um, buy, uh, pickup co- uh, comic, a little co- uh, you know uh, convention mm-hmm. where you had some of the people who you know TV stuff there. They actually set up the conventions and all that stuff, and it, they tried to salvage it. Um, but you know what? It was it. I, I I was that was a little bit happy. So people who did show up to it, mm-hmm. uh, they actually had a little bit of a uh, something to do with Baltimore, even mm-hmm. though it was only for one day. Um, and it's just, I'm like, man. And you know what the funny thing is about all this? And hmm. this is from uh, the Vulture. Uh, I found this Vulture stuff here. Yep. Is instead of the people taking any personal responsibility, anything at all, they said this, and I, it still burns me. And I, even though I didn't work at the convention, but I know people who have, and they're still pissed off at this, is, is this a statement right uh, here. Is uh, says that... Uh, it is like you know, um, where was it? 
uh, it's like here. Um, uh, Rob Butler. Yeah. Who still follows me on Twitter? I don't know why. He's, even though okay. he's ghost on Twitter. But yeah. I'll give you quick. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, then yeah. you can kick me. The kick no, I'm like I'm. Oh yeah, I'm watching my. I'm watching my guest fade into literal darkness right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he said this. He said. Um, he said, um, he said, he went on to suggest that a surprising lack of enthusiasm for diversity among fans. He said, if more fans bought tickets, he said, the, um, you know, Rob Butler says, the whole debacle could have been avoided. Unfortunately, they just didn't. I should have known better, but I let my belief in this non existent community blind me. That's not, be- that's sort yeah. of like saying, like, my film wouldn't have tanked at the box office if more people had just gone and watched it. It's like, well, you could have made a better film. Shush! Shush yourself now. No. Uh, I, I can't stand it, that. So, so I, the, I mean, it, it's, it is kind of sad when you see, like, you know, a, you know, a convention, like, really just eat shit like that. And um, especially yeah. when they're going for something like a convention center and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, arrogance and hubris and just... That's the stupidity. nature of things. That's just the nature of things. Um, so here's <laughs> what right. we're gonna do. Just uh, it's nine sixteen now. Um, so we're gonna go. I'm thinking we're gonna go for another fifteen minutes here uh, before we uh, before we move on. Got anything in addition to your uh, podcast coming up after the show? Well, mm-hmm. let's see. After the show, any the questions Duke you want to ask? Anything you want to? Anything you want to? Want to field? You know, well, Duke City Lounge will be live on Talk Show and stuff like that. Also, right. in the podcast, I play little OC remix songs during the show, so keeps y'all people engaged and people seem to like it. Also, I have a video review show called Last Review of Standing, which is hopefully I will bring um, a new episode hopefully um, this weekend or next weekend, uh, depending if I actually get time to just sit down and actually write something, you know. Yeah, I wish sometimes I wish I'd be like uh, you, man, uh, Nick, because you seem like you get all this, uh, you know, stuff you get. You, you seem like this really hammered this stuff, man. I need to get that that better work ethic and such. So, oh get my... no, do not look to me for 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 an example of a good work ethic. You will not find it. Um, uh, well, you have a green screen, so you you know a little bit higher production values than us. Yeah, you, I mean, so. yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, there's plenty of YouTube channels with green screens that are still absolute shit. So, um, that being, the, I mean, do you have any uh, any any questions for Dank? I mean, not a single person. Oh, but asked. I basically ignored Kyle Dankula. I'm yeah, sorry. That's rude. <laughs> that's rude. No, I'm not for the man. He's one half of the show tonight. I am terrible. But, you are. Uh, you sh- yes, I you should hang your head in shame. <laughs> I should get a death shot in yeah. such. If, you I know, could go uh, for a death yeah. shot myself. This, this is bad. Uh, yes. Absolute if I ever, you know what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if if I ever meet Jeff, I will, and he brings that with me, I will do a death shot. There we go. Live on camera. Like live. Uh, uh, you know, we're on camera oof. and everything else. And I don't drink, so I will do it. So believe you me, I will do that. <laughs> and... <laughs> All right, everybody, you know, go check out it. Duke CT. It, yeah, Duke CT. You'll find. Uh, go follow him on. Uh, go follow him on Twitter. You'll find the links to his uh, to his to his podcast coming up and his show, uh, as well as uh, links to his own YouTube channel. He discusses wrestling and all those sorts of things. Duke uh, Duck it, Duck it. I can't go yes. calling you by your real name, Duck it. Thanks for coming in, brother. All right, peace. All right, later. All right. See you, dude. So we're yeah we're gonna we got ten minutes left to this show I'm figuring because like it's the Thursday show and we just sort of do a ramshackle thing I'm gonna see how many people got left and I see you fucking fading there I can see you're like sleep fucking it's, sleep it's, uh, it's just because of the time of night man that's all I know there's still only ten people in the waiting room so we're coming up on oh we got oh my boy Dreadbell's coming in wait a second where the fuck that's the wrong one there we go boom. Dreadabel, welcome. No, why the fuck is Kekatrani here? God damn it. I am fucking hating this mouse. I swear to you, you know what it is? It's this cheap shit fucking Amazon mouse that I've got. This thing, it decides like every so often, it's like, oh, are you holding the button down? <laughs> no, you're not. Ha! <laughs> Fucker. Yeah. So now we've got, um, no, that's still not the right fucking one. Let's try this again. There we go. Got it that time. Yeah, see, this is why Streamlabs are important, oh, so they wow. can get better beer and oh, a decent shit. mouse. Yeah, I was trying to get you in, and I kept pulling in other fucking people, because my mouse kept, like, unclicking and re-clicking while I wasn't looking. It had nothing to do with my oh. finger. This thing is very exercised. What's going on? Hmm. I don't know what's hey, going dude, on, man. dude. Hope this well, makes up I... for not getting into the game last night. 
I don't know what was going on last night. It was kind of weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dreadabel here is actually one of my uh, my, my most regulars. He's uh, my, one of my regular GTA uh, PUBG fam. Which, by the way, dang, we've never actually gamed together, have we? No, I think we have. Uh, yeah, we played PUBG before. I think it was like me, you, Jeff, and Chris Regan. We oh, played it was, PUBG. It was terrible. Be, very, be, yeah, very badly. It's very bad, we yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good stream. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> it, which is telling me it was probably halfway decent. So, how's it going, Dreadabel? What's good with you? Um, well, I called the IRS. On me? No. <laughs> oh. on, my, on myself. Why? Oh, because uh, I didn't get my tax return. Oh. Because someone filed a tax return with a social security number. Was it a decent return? Eh. It was going to get like three or four out of it. So somebody out there's got a really nice uh, Sony Vio paid for with your uh, tax dollars. That's good. That's good. some good communism right there. Redistribution of wealth. I like it. So I like well. Yeah, so <laughs> well aside from aside from uh, calling the IRS, um, so it, have, have there been any uh, any other bright spots to your day aside from actually jumping into the stream and uh, and getting to find out that Count Dankula is as bad as pub, at PUBG as you are? <laughs> oh, dude, that honors me <laughs> <laughs> to know that no, I'm, the I'm, great I'm shit at PUBG. I'm shit at PUBG. I'm absolutely terrible. I thought I was I'm, really I'm good okay. at Fortnite, but then I realized I was just playing World of Warcraft. I hate Fortnite. I tried it. I fucking hate it. I can't stand the game, and I don't understand why it's popular. I think it's just because it's free. Yeah, Fortnite. I think that's what it is. We're, we're raised, we're raised a generation free. of communists, which is why the free game is the popular one. Well, <laughs> when you got a free game, that's where the 12-year-olds flock who can't yeah. use their mom's credit card. Yeah. 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 After after they buy it's like the poor twelve year old. Yeah. They're cringy. You know what it is? It's probably all like you know. It's probably actually like fourteen year olds who after when they were twelve and um and they were just playing uh, what is that uh, not Starcraft um oh Eve Online Roblox. yeah no they started playing Eve Online and then they got a hold of mom's credit card and then they got really good at Eve Online and all of a sudden they were reduced to free play free to play games only. Yeah. That'd be my guess. <laughs> I love EVE Online as well but see because of the learning curve it's good because it keeps the riffraff out <laughs> <laughs> see my thing I've always been a little nervous of that game because I know there's a huge learning curve but at the same time like all of the people who I would play with are already like fantastically wealthy well experienced loads of shit they'd be like oh you're fine man here's a fucking dope ass ship and I'd be that douchebag cruising around in like some obscene battle cruiser that a friend just gave to me with no clue what I'm doing and a bunch of like new like people who had to restart or some shit like how the fuck did he get that he's clearly a moron <laughs> nah even even online is good if you know what you're doing as in like see how you you made a mistake there see how when you said you were on eve online and you spoke to friends you don't have friends on eve online right you have acquaintances who you watch out for because one day they might backstab you. They probably will. Just that's drain, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. how EVE Online works. They'll just drain your corporation's entire bank account it's like, and then yeah. run away. It's like, mate, I let you fuck my sister. I know, and it was good. I appreciate that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a different environment altogether. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, EVE Online is like the whole battle royale, like the original one, that Japanese movie. Well, even if you've got a friend that you've been with for 15 years or something, and you get if you get dumped on an island and you need to fight to the death and the winner actually gets to survive, watch how long that friendship lasts. <laughs> fucking destroys more fucking, um, destroys more friendships than Facebook, I'd say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me see. There we go. And, and and genuine fucking by the way, real quick, genuine apologies to Six Foot Mouse. Um, this was as I, when I was trying to get Dreadabel in. I was uh, I had rolled there, and then anytime I click with this mouse, and it happens too. Like you should see half of the screenshots I try taking. 
<laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna screenshot this region. Why the fuck is it just the? Why the fuck is it just my browser bar? What the fuck? So, apologies to you, my friend. Um, I sorry if it feels like I like like you know like teach your dick, but didn't let you get the come on the cake on that one. So my bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, sorry, we were talking about EVE Online before I got distracted by the notion of coming on cakes once more. That's a, a I mean, don't, don't judge me. Don't look at my browser history either, but, um. <laughs> oh, are you one of those people that, like, search for videos like Cake Farts? Cake, cake Farts is a thing? No, listen, I've never been a member of Dankula's Discord, so that's not my thing. Yeah, my Discord's a very, very, very special place. I'm afraid of your Discord, Dankula. I've been but... there. I'm in there. I don't yeah, go we, there. We, we, we actually managed to find... Discord got quite annoyed with us because we actually managed to find a loophole around the rules. Like, we actually... Apparently, right, you can't glorify violence. Right? You can't glorify violence or post gore. However, I did, I did say to them, like, is scat porn allowed? And, and they kept dodging the question and I just kept repeatedly asking... Are we allowed to post scat porn? And they were like, yes, you can, as long as people consent to it. Now, our server had like 8,000 members. So what we did was we drafted a bot to kick everyone into a zone called the consent form, where they would have to give their consent, and they weren't allowed back into the server until they did. And we made 8,000 people do this. And they had to agree to this declaration, literally a contract that was defined as the Magna Scatter. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and like, and the thing was, like, even though this was like a huge operation, this took like eight, nine hours to set up, and it was all done by Ruger. And fucking, like, the the thing is, it was completely within Discord's rules, so we can post as much poo as we want in our Discord. Basically, we we gamed the system, and it was glorious. And the Discord and and Discord uh, devs are just watching it, saying, "We worked so hard, so this could happen." Oh no! Eventually, what happened was like we went. They went far back enough, and they actually managed to find some shit they could get as far, and they yeeted the entire server. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the whole server gets shut down. No notice, no warning. Boom! Entire server gone. But what we did is we actually had a huh. exact clone of the server on the oh. side, just sitting there waiting. So you see, as soon as that one like gets shut down. We just released the link to the new one, and everyone just rejoined. Yeah. Uh, quick uh, streamlabs come in from Larry Kubiak. Big 50 bones. Even though I'm screaming in the void, death shot to whoever reads this message. Love you, motherfuckers. Shout out to my man Dank and Nick, of course. Love you, fuckers. Dude, I don't have a death shot, but I'll make Jeff take one when uh, he gets back. How about that? Where did Jeff go? Uh, Jeff's off with the uh, Jeff's off with the uh, family business. He's got to do some family stuff, and um, ah, it was important enough to where he was willing to sacrifice the show by leaving it in my hands. So there we go. That's rough. Yeah. What the fuck? But at least we got dank. <laughs> oh wait, that's not even in my own shit. Somebody's talking. I was like, who the fuck is in my apartment now? How did that happen? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, thanks, thanks. Clearly, a quality fucking co-host. Uh, Jeff is on holiday. Yep, well done, Dark, <laughs> Dark Mech, 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 Dark Mech, Mech. Oh, I like that name. That's a good one. Um, so, thank you, Lev. What are yes. your views on how much DACA is enough DACA? DACA. What's DACA? I'm unfamiliar with this concept. Work word for automatic weapon. Uh, I have no idea. What the fuck are you talking not, about now? I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> the word for automatic The answer weapon. is, the only amount that is enough DACA is when there is so much DACA that the entire universe is nothing but an endless barrage of missiles, machine guns, and lasers firing and destroying and creating each other at the same time. Uh huh? I see. No, uh, D A K K A. Uh, it doesn't Warhammer help, 40K. dude. It's not like a, a, like a, we just went through a whole thing about context recently. Warhammer Forty K. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm fucking clueless then. That makes some. That makes Is sense. anybody else's YouTube or Gmail playing up right now? Oh, I'm not watching YouTube or Gmail. Oh, you mean the the background noise? No, just um, I can't sign into YouTube. 
Oh, really? Oh, dear. Let's take a look here. Is that Buddha in the background? Yeah, that is Buddha snoring in the background, yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like a joke. That's, that's not suffering, that's just a hug trying to exist. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to use. I still love. I think. I think it's one of the best. Uh, one of the best lines yet. It's like a pug is the perfect example of why the Nazis are wrong, and we shouldn't play God. Look at what happens when we try. <laughs> <laughs> Miserable little fucking animal. Oh, uh, let's see. No, everything's working on my end. Uh, the New York Post notes that he flew President Clinton and Kevin Spacey to Africa on his private Boeing 727. Oh. As a guy named Epstein. I'm just glad to know that, you know, Bill Clinton got Kevin Spacey, too. He got his Me Too moment, so. Um, <laughs> we're closing in on the end of the stream here. Dreadabel, uh, you've asked your question. You, you, you've made your Warhammer reference. Anything you'd like to show, promote, whore out, pimp, promote, or a uh, question you'd like to ask that's hopefully not related to Warhammer 40k that leaves me in a fucking stupor? No, I'm good. Oh, well, that was anticlimactic, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be bringing this stream to a close because, for one thing, we are uh, running short on time. Also, I have to get the kid to bed and stuff and do adult real-life things. Uh, we should take this moment to first pay respects to the uh, soon-to-be-deceased sex life of our good friend Marcus here. Uh, congratulations on your engagement, friend. Um, Thanks, and uh, also, what was it? Uh, just real quick, that that one, that one, that one, that one. Fuck, uh, Mike something or other, who's like, hey, yeah, he gets all the birds, and then you know he goes to like furiously masturbate in his bathroom. Uh, did you have any contact with him since then? No. No. The, the account on Twitter. The no. No, I haven't oh. spoken to him. Oh. He's I mean, just he's having had a chat. You know what you need to do is you need, <laughs> you, need, you need to find you need to find one of uh, you need to find one of Sue's friends, right? The, the friends, the kind nobody likes, and uh, see if you can like hook them up. And I would be like, hey man, don't worry, you ain't gotta be alone forever. You can get out that incel community whenever you want. Oh, he won't debate me or anything like that at all. That's upsetting. Yeah, well, I Very mean, upsetting. you know, just do, you know, I think you should do another fundraiser. Like get him, get him some plane tickets or something. Get him a boat pass. Get him off to like the red get Mike, district. Get Mike cleaned. Get yeah, Mike cleaned. Just, fundraiser. Just, just get Mike's dick wet. The fundraiser, and it's like, hey, Mike, how's it going? You feel better yet? Oh man, I send him to Thailand. Yeah, just yeah, send him off to Thailand. Be like, oh, listen, we'll send you off with of Chris Dangerfield. They'll show you all the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that being the case... Thank you to all the good lady boys. All of the best lady boys ever. So, uh, that, I suppose, rounds it out, unless there's anything else anyone has to say. Oh, yes, no, there's one actual final thing, and this is all, uh, this is actually kind of serious. Um, I would, I'm not the biggest fan of the guy myself, and I know Marcus here isn't either, but, uh, he was a notable individual, and, and we lost, uh, Total Biscuit today. Total Biscuit. Yeah. John Bain died today. Um, I'm hoping in the presence of his family and his loved ones um you were a bit of a cunt in real life man but uh you, your fight's over now and um hoping you're at peace was it a heart attack no i think it was cancer yeah oh. it was cancer he, he'd, he'd been diagnosed with it years ago and he was actually supposed to die years ago but he managed to just keep on trucking for all that time yeah and oh, he fought, he, fought a good, he fought a good fight for a good long while, uh, all the while taking shit from all angles too. I mean, this is a guy who he went after the he went after the social justice left, and he had no problem going after other people. I mean, he went after anybody he thought was a cunt. Sometimes he was right, and sometimes he was wrong in my opinion. But all the same, the guy fought so a whole load of battles on a whole load of fronts, uh, and fought it to the bitter end. And uh, uh, for his own part, uh, you know, never lost his sense of self. So, uh, John Bain, pinkies up to you, man. Hope you're resting well. Uh, in the meantime, though, on the upper, on the higher note, guess what? I get to be done with this show now. So, hey, how about that? Uh, Marcus gets, <laughs> go, gets to go to sleep. We've been your Midweek Saints, episode 39. Thanks, explaining to Teresa May. Thank all of you who's shown <laughs> up to hang out with us. Thank you, everybody who jumped into Streamlabs, though, throwing some shekels my way. It's always appreciated. Jeff will be back with us on Sunday, back on our own channel. Good news, the strike has been lifted. 
who would have guessed that a bullshit strike like that uh, would last uh, as long as it did. But it's gone now, so we'll catch you back Sunday night over on the YouTube channel, 11 or 10.30 Eastern Standard Time, and something else on that other coast that we're going to just keep pretending exists in the meantime. But all that being the case, good night, everyone. Marks, send them off. Thanks very much, man. Uh... Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to go to my bed now. <laughs> <laughs> and good night. Jeez. You have a good night, Dink. Ah, uh, will do, man. I'm fucking... My, my head's up in the clouds right now because I'm fucking sleepy. I <laughs> that we are out. Let me take a look here. I'm back into my YouTube as well.